lab guy here. I'm dedicating today's video to Dalek Moore. Check out his channel. My friend Harry at Dalek Moore wrote to me recently and had some questions about a cathode ray tube that someone had given to him or he acquired in some manner. And it's a really cool European made two electron gun tube. He had some good questions. It was a challenging tube and he's doing very well at getting that tube running. Uh, I answered many of his questions, very good questions, and uh, gave him some guidance on how one would uh, address the uh, needs to make a mystery CRT operate. Well, needless to say, that reminded me of my giant junk box. And several years ago, two, three more years ago, I bought this cutie. Don't tell me that isn't the coolest little picture tube you've ever seen. That is a neato little tube. It's four inches diagonally, roughly, and three by three inches square. It has P31 phosphor. It has a television style electron gun. And it's magnetic deflection, electrostatic focus. Needless to say, I need to test this CRT. So, I searched for data sheets. Zilch, nada, zero, nil, nothing. There's nothing out there about this tube. I believe it comes <laughs> from the planet Spaceballs. <laughs> Because the part number on the tube, I don't know if you can see it, is the same as the, as the combination for the force field shield around the planet Druidia. This tube is an M1, 2, 3, 4, P31. It's an M1, 2, 3, 4, P31. Well, needless to say, Lab Guy has already changed the combination on his luggage. <laughs> okay, moving right along. No data sheets, but fortunately, the neck of this tube is very transparent. And I do a technique called candling. That's where I look through the glass and I trace the connections of the internal elements of the tube back to the pins on the base. Most CRTs can be done this way and if you're real lucky you get this modern style minimalist base where the pins come right through the glass. Older tubes have a Bakelite base that is placed on and the wires come through the pins and are soldered to the pins. You can still candle those tubes. That's what I call it, candling, which is a term that comes from the egg industry where they take chicken eggs and place them over a hole on a box with a bright light and it lights the egg up and they can see uh, what's inside the egg. So I do the same thing with this where I shine light in here and I look at the electron gun. Let's look at my spiffy drawing of the electron gun and the ultimate pinout of the tube. You'll note that I've drawn a cutaway drawing of the electron gun if, as if we had sawed this thing right down the middle lengthwise. And starting at the back end, the little orange area is the cathode. The cathode is a round metal pipe with one end capped and coated with an electron emitting material. I think it's barium, barium oxide. Inside that, the little squiggly lines in there are the heaters. You'll note that the two pins for the heater are labeled H and H. Most tube heaters are 6.3 volts, and this one was no exception, and it's 6.3 volts, 150 milliamps, or about 
1.8 watts. Then the cathode tube comes out, uh, and when I say tube, I mean it's a little tubular piece of metal with a cap on the end that emits electrons, which is the blue line in the uh, cutaway picture there. That represents the electron beam, and it's emitted off the end of the cathode tube. Around that is a cylinder with a hole in it, or an aperture, and that is grid number one. And it's called the grid cup because it looks like a cup with a hole right in the center of its bottom. That is where the blue beam is coming out of the cathode. This grid cup, when made negative enough, will stop electrons from the cathode from going through that hole. The next little cup is called A1. That is the first anode and it's usually operated at between 100 and 250 volts in most CRTs and that basically gets the beam accelerating. Following A1 is the first element of A2. A2 is the internal coating within the CRT that is connected by the high voltage connection which in this tube was at the front top. A2 is split into two pieces and between them sits A3. All three of these are cylinders on the electron gun assembly, the A2 components of the electron gun. These are specially shaped cups as you can see Again, keep in mind these are cut in half so we can see them. And a, wrapped around them is a ring called A3. Anode 3, I found that it operates well when it's grounded, 0 volts. And A2 is running at the 2000 volts I was putting in from my power supply. I'm not 100% positive that's the absolute correct voltages for the tube to work but for this test it was enough to get the gun running and making a spot on the face of the tube. So the voltages that I used to test the tube, the cathode is at zero volts, grid one as it was around minus 25 volts, anode one was operating at 150 volts positive, anode two was at two kilovolts, and anode three was at zero volts and it made a fine spot on the tube. Looking at the right hand diagram, that is the schematic symbol of the tube, and I want to quickly go through the pin numbers. The heater is connected to pins 1 and 8. The cathode comes out on pin 7. Grid 1 comes out on two different pins, 2 and 6. Take your pick. Anode 1 is on pin 3. Anode 3 is on pin 4. And anode 2, as shown in my diagram, is at the top front of the tube. I'll bet you'd like to see this tube tested now. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get on with it. Here is the CRT and the high voltage power supply on the bench ready for the test. Here is a better look at the cobweb of clip leads on the back side of the M1234P31 cathode ray tube. This is my ICO 1030 vacuum tube power supply. It has filament voltages 6.3 volts 3 amps 6.3 volts center tapped at 3 amps. It has a 0 to 150 volt negative bias power supply. It has a 0 to 400 volt DC up to 150 milliamps B plus power supply output. You can monitor the current and the voltage of the two high voltage outputs by selecting which one you're looking at here. 
the heater supply is already connected and the power supply is turned on. The heater in the tube is lit. The first thing we want to do is set the bias voltage up here to minus 50 volts. That's a good starting point. I've discovered through experimentation that a good B plus voltage for anode 1 is 150 volts. So we now turn on the B plus output and set this meter to read 150 volts. The electron gun in the tube currently has 0 volts on the cathode, 0 volts on anode 3, the focus anode, it has minus 50 volts on G1 and plus 150 volts on anode 1. So the electron gun's low voltage, low voltage end is biased and ready for us to apply high voltage to it. The final step to light up the CRT is to turn on the high voltage power supply and turn up the voltage to about 2 kilovolts which I've determined through experimentation and we will see a spot appear on the CRT. I'm using my high voltage probe with my multimeter. This is a voltage dividing probe that will allow me to measure high voltages up to 6 thousand volts. It's made by Fluke and I will put the model number on the screen for you. So I'm beginning to monitor the voltage. The power supply, the high voltage power supply that is, is putting out next to nothing and I'm going to start turning up the high voltage. 900 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600, 1,800, 1,900, 2,000 volts. At this point, we now have enough high voltage. I now need to turn down G1 because the electron gun is cut off. So as I lower G1 we should see a spot and lo and behold we do. Hallelujah! So we're running 2000 volts on anode 2, 150 volts on anode 1, about minus 25 to minus 30 volts on G1. If I turn, continue to turn this up, you'll see the point flare. Now the next thing we need to do is to deflect our spot with a magnet. This is a neodymium magnet that I happen to have. When I bring my magnet in from the side, the spot can be moved down. We turn over the magnet, we can move the spot up. Coming in from the top, we can move the spot to the right. Rotate the magnet, we can move the spot to the left. I don't want to get my fingers too close to that high voltage. And if you notice, if we move it fast, you can see the persistence of the P31 phosphor. So that was the testing of the M1234 P31 CRT, the mystery tube. I hope you folks enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Tell a friend about this channel. If you know anyone who is interested in antique video equipment that isn't a television set, there's plenty of videos about television set restorations and most of them are extremely good. So, uh, welcome to all the new subscribers. You guys are just piling on. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Greetings to all of my current subscribers. Keep watching. I hope I keep, keep you informed and keep you coming back. Um, if you like the video, you know what to do. Um, if you like CRTs, if you like camera tubes, if you like sink generators, tell me in the comments. Tell me which videos in the series or the multiple series I'm running right now, which of the videos is the most popular. So let me know. Don't be silent. Give a comment. Let me know. And uh, that pretty much covers everything for today for this video. So um, until I see you next time, Lab Guy out.